Yes, there we go. The red light is on. So, um, as Sharon explained, we've known our, we knew our first speaker, have known our first speaker for many, many years. Our second speaker, we've known for a much less amount of time, a short amount of time. Um, we asked a good friend of ours in Berlin if he could recommend somebody, uh, Christopher Bowder. He's a light artist and lighting designer, and he straight away recommended Natalie. And so we're really pleased that Natalie's been able to join us today, and she's going to talk about light from a different perspective, um, from the perspective of clubs and stage light and light art and luminaires as well. So, Natalie, over to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the invitation and uh, the great chance to speak at the Women at Lighting session today. So I will give you an insight into my work of club lighting, stage lighting, and the lighting luminaires, and as my work to be a technical director by the light exhibition Dark Matter. So about myself, I'm 40 years old and I live in Berlin. Until 2021, I was self-employed as a lighting designer. And since I, then, I have also been working as a technical director for the audiovisual light art exhibition Dark Matter. Um, since I've been in Berlin, I've worked in many different lighting areas. So my education was the field of metal. And then afterwards, I completed my studies in event technology and management. At the moment, I'm still regularly on the road with my band uh, Karala Dust. And I work also in the club uh, Berghain, as perhaps you know, it's a really famous and big club on the weekends. So this allows me to continue working creatively in addition to many administrative activity activities. So about this presentation, um, I would like to give you an insight into my multifaceted work with light. As I mentioned, first I take you to the journey of where I come from, from the club lighting. Afterwards, uh, I go drop into the stage lighting, and afterwards I give you a, um, an overview how it is to build your own luminaires and how it is to work as a technical director. So um, I started in the late 90s at the club Ultraschall. It was a famous club to that time in Munich. I was uh, really young, so three days after my 18th birthday I started. I knocked on the door and I just asked kindly if I can come in and I have the right age now. And then I started to work there. Um, here you can see the, the DJ booth. The DJ was standing there. I was directly next to the DJ. And here was the dance floor in the club. So from this place on, I could see all the dancers was and I was really close to the crowd and to the DJ, which influenced me a lot in the way of doing lights, since I have a direct connection to the DJ and to the audience. And from that starting point on, I felt comfortable in clubs, and I worked with a lot of different kinds of DJs. So coming to the question, how is my work like with doing club lighting? Um, since I don't work with a permanent DJ, every evening is uh, more or less designed afresh by myself. And I don't have rehearsals with the artist beforehand, uh, like it is regularly in case, for example, with the stage lighting. So my way of working is based on a purely intuitive impulse and a personal interpretation of the tracks I hear. And also, I'm not for sure I'm influenced of the crowd and for the DJ, so how the vibe is in the moment. Um, to prepare the show, I try to clarify all the technical details in advance. And I prepare the show in that way that I can think and concentrate me um, during the show into the design of the light and into the setup. Um, most of the time, I start slowly and statically to create tension. And it depends, on, uh, of course, uh, of, on the construction of the DJ set to which I adjust the light. I also try to create pleasant atmosphere in the club to invite the dancers. So for the DJ and for the LJ and uh, for all the parts of uh, creative people, it's uh, important to fill the dance floor quickly. And for this, I often use only one color tone or warm colors combinations. Um, so I will show you later some, um, some slides for that.
what is the interface with the other traders? So you have in the club um, also uh, L chase, V chase, laser guys. Um, you have the bar light, the ambient light. Sometimes daylight is coming into the club. So the cooperation between the various technical uh, areas is sensitive, and it's very important that they work hand in hand. The main question is who follows whom, who determines the color and the forms. My experience is that I always meet very open and friendly persons and they provide you sometimes with slots and you can talk to them. And it's a good solution for collaboration um, to provide each other with the time slot that e each artist can go with their show. But uh, sometimes I also work with uh, really nice crews, artist crews from whom I uh, wor work particularly well because the creative sensibilities go in the same direction as mine. And in this case, there is no need for a consultation. Then we just give us each other like a satisfied uh, look, and then everything is well without preparing time slots. This is what I like the most. If you just feel the forms, you feel the colors, and you, you're merging in the same direction, this is a really good feeling when you have with other people. So the last options you have on the dance floor, which is in uh, smaller clubs, and also um, I'm playing in smaller clubs sometimes, the more ambient light I take um, in account. And you might know the special challenge of doing lights uh, on a festival or in a club when, uh, the, when it's not dark, and or it's not dark yet, or the light is coming in, then fog and haze uh, and warm colors that wrap the whole stage in a cloud of light always helps a lot. So this is how I help me myself out of, of that issue. So I mentioned um, color combinations, and uh, I wanted to come to that uh, slide to show you something about it. <coughs> so which color combinations I choose is depending on principle on which uh, lamps I have um, at my disposal. So um, if you have like the older lamps where you have a light uh, color generation, is realized, but the color generation is realized with illuminates and a color wheel, um, then the color combination um, are structurally predetermined. So it's only possible to reach the colors from which is next to each other from the color wheel. And you don't have to uh, possibility to choose the colors you really want. But if I have lights available that use um, a color mix engine and a color source, I have the multiplicity of combinations possibilities within the scope of all light colors. And here you can see, for example, like uh, color combinations I like a lot. It's um, sometimes the, um, the amber, dark amber and uh, cyan or the violet and the pink stuff. So as well as CTO and CTB. So I like to mix uh, these colors, which you're not so, um, seen so often at uh, these events. So coming to the start of the show, um, at the beginning, I mentioned of the show, I like to take static elements because they give me a clear structure and represent exactly what I want to show. And they serve me as a constructive element. Starting from a rigid structure, I can bring afterwards then individual elements to life and get started with the story of the evening. The same applies um, to the situation of the DJ chains, since the new DJ means for me a new history and a new lighting mood and a new look for sure then. I use a static element as a starting point. It's for me about capturing and reflecting the tempo and the power of the music with corresponding movements and different positions. Um, I, lose, uh, I use moving light by limiting the movements in the space I have either in a targeted or also in a non-targeted directed way. These can be small and quiet movements, but also large and fast movements that fit in well with the music or stand out from it. Light and darkness. So both light and darkness are essential for me to create a show. Without dark moments, the light cannot work. For me, it's essential to create tension through darkness and to generate a maximum of light output at the right moments in order to allow me to, ex to allow me extreme feelings to take effect. 
So I really love to make it pretty dark that the audience think, uh, okay, there's something wrong, no lights anymore, and then coming back with a big blind and the hands go up. So based on these pictures, um, I want to show you some examples. You can see a variety of colors I choose, and you can see static and moving lights. So uh, in the first picture, um, you can see that I moved the truss system to a cross position, and I took a prisma, uh, and it gives the crowd a dy dynamic feeling. Perhaps you can see it, that they also raise their hands, and they're like shaking a little bit. So in the second picture, here in the bigger one, um, you can see a static color from above to the dance floor. It's a combination of uh, dark amber and violet colors. And um, I wanted to give them like a, a color shower. And they were like, yeah, feeling like they had a had this shower. I mentioned it also sometimes they look up and it was like a static good moment to, to give them like being in a cloud. The third picture shows you um, like a static um, position like a, a diamond, and the whole position was a moving um, through, the, through, the, through the club, through the dance floor, and it's a combination of both, of uh, moving light and static light. All the three pictures are um, from Printworks, where, uh, where I did many session, uh, seasons. But how do I arrange myself in different places and their conditions? So here you can see um, different, uh, different clubs. Conditions include the shape of the club, its capacity, and its, and if visible, the history of the architectural point of view. Depending on the shape of the club, this can define the position of the basic framework and the truss arrangement in the room. As you can see here in picture one, you see the Berghain. It's that one. The after the building beside is the Halle of the Birken, so I'm just talking about the first. Um, yeah, you can see the B Club Birken uh, has a square shape, while the print works in London has a long rectangle. So this is all the dance floor. It's pretty long, 120 meters. And the building from the location, the Garten in Beirut in Lebanon, is a speciality because here the building is not uh, completely round, but a kind of pyramid with uh, different polygons, which is half open and half closed. So you can see here the half open part, the half closed part, and it's more like um, a circle. So I also try to take the history in into um, my way of doing light. Um, the history of the venue plays an important role as it is possible to include the architecture in the lighting. Berkheim used to be a power and heat plant uh, station, and Printworks was a printing plant. So for structural reasons, the ven these venues have several special features, such uh, uh, as a heavy-duty crane above the dance floor in Berkheim. And in, in the Printworks, uh, there are like driver gaps around the floor, the dance floor, and there you also can illuminate this uh, driver's gaps and give another feeling in the architectural. So for example here, um, as you can see, there are li some light levels. Isabel was also showing uh, us this in the architectural lighting, so I was uh, happy to, to hear it from that side also. So I, I always try to look at the whole room and try to use it holistically as you can see here in these both pictures. I try to include the characteristics of the venue. If available, I play with the different structural levels. As you can see here in the print works also, they have, I illuminated the DJ. I had lights on the balconies for the crowd above that they feel a little bit more cozy in that moment also. I have uh, the lights in the trust system to, for the people here on the balconies. So I have different kinds of levels and different options to, to get the people involved. Um, at the uh, location in Beirut, as I mentioned in the slides beforehand, this is the open, the open um, part of the club. And with the slide levels and uh, the combination with LED stripes, 
that it was possible also to build these levels. So now I would uh, like to say something about the overall course of the event. The interaction with the DJ is the focus from the be beginning to the end of the set. The main task is to understand the structure and the history of the DJ set and to tra translate it visually so that it reflects the mood and the message of the music and transmit it to the audience. On this basis, the guests become a performer and the dance floor become a stage. For me, light is the multiplying factor that visually underlines and reinforces the music. So my challenge uh, for every show is to create a special moment in which light and music fit together in perfect harmony. So, and if this nonverbal com communication is working pretty good with the DJ, this can be beautifully described in a sentence that DJ Francois X once said in an interview after he played in Berghain. It was super cute, he said, it was a beautiful short romance between my music and her lights. And uh, yeah, reaching this romance gives me always motivation to go on. <coughs> so coming to stage light. Um, Carol Dust is a band considering out of a bunch of very smart guys who produce music I like a lot. With their music, the band tries to bridge the gap between electronic music and traditional songwriting by incorporating a wide variety of styles into their sound. And for me, this makes it really exciting because uh, I can work in many different kinds of music styles and connect these light with these lights. It's a mixture of club, uh, the club atmosphere, which I told you before, and uh, the stage lighting. And this built for me the bridge uh, coming from the club lighting into the stage lighting. I loved being on tour with them uh, for the first time last year, 2022, and I was also very happy to cooperate with them again this year on the Europe and the festival tour. So here's an example. Um, as you can see, uh, the connection from the club lighting to the stage lighting because the band doesn't like to be blinded from the front from with the lights, I often design the light from the back that the, um, the band is illuminated as there were silhouettes. And yeah, I have also more like this feeling being in a club because I do it a lot with the DJs, the building lights from behind and working with shadows and working with the silhouette effect. Sometimes they get the front light just that you can take pictures of them. <laughs> So what is my work like with the stage lighting? In the beginning, there was no narrative concept. The band has gotten me to be beforehand, and they liked my work. They trusted me to develop a lighting show for them without giving any framework. So the first gig was in Solo Center in Istanbul in 2021, and it was to become the blueprint, and everybody was satisfied with the result. Dozens of very different locations and venues and the challenge to adapt the respective conditions on the fly and always on a very short period of time sometimes proved to be very demanding. At the same time, I always try to live up to my own expectations to ensure that the unique looks and designs I had created for this band were realized at every single concert. The challenge to each show is to build up tension at the concert and to hold it with the music of the band. So also parallel like to the club lighting. There's uh, one special feature uh, with this band. Um, we don't tour with a floor set. So this means um, I have to create my unique looks with the material what is available in the club. So here in this venue, uh, in this venue, it was Huxley's Neue Welt in Berlin. You can see that there is not a lot of light in the rig, and by putting at least four 
spots in the back and uh, three strobes in, in the back, um, I had more like the feeling having unique look. So sometimes it's not needed to take a lot of light to create the same look. So now I, um, I come to the third part of my shades of light, the upcycling and conversion of industrial lamps. So how it is to build your own luminaires? It's a lot of work, I can tell you. Um, the inspiration of this work was an upcycling idea of my good friends and me when we come across these lights by chance. We had seen this enormous uh, number of lights and spent the whole, light, whole night around the campfire thinking whether we should really buy 126 Imagine this is much more than you can see here from the trader and the make a big lighting project out of it. So we decided to do it, but first um, we had to overcome logistical hurdles due to the very huge quantity of luminaires and their dimensions of 58 centimeter in diameter and the height of 60, 60 centimeter each. The luminaires first had to transport it from place A to B and also had to be put in a storage somewhere. So we found a solution for this uh, and then we're coming to step two. We live in different cities. He lives in the so south of Germany, I'm in the north. And yeah, we had to take a time free to do this conversion. And um, we also had uh, to build up our own assembly line in the open air and for this, we leased a plot of land, so because you have to work somewhere. So we had an open air a working place and that not only screw day and night, also when it rained, we had no tents. So all the electronical parts came out and the new electronical parts were installed from the gummets uh, to the safety chain, the glasses, the new sockets, E70, uh, 27 to E40 adapters, so everything we put in so that we can use it uh, until from all voltages until 500. Then we started the drop tests. What happens when the luminaires fall from a height of one meter into the safety? The lamp were destroyed. So there was a lot of room to improvement. Here you can see um, me working after a, lo a lot of days. There was no smile in my face anymore. Um, it was cold. And uh, yeah, we finished the luminaires and then after long days and nights, a night, a new challenge arose. Uh, we didn't thought about the transport and we didn't thought about um, how could we bring the lamps on stage. So uh, we had to uh, design and build lamp trolleys, as you can see in the second picture with my friend Thomas here. So we ordered steel and uh, the steel was delivered. It was uh, then vended and sanded and painted, sanded and vended and painted again from us because we had no idea, we, we didn't know how to do it, just do it. And finally, in the end, uh, we had the four trolleys and um, with each uh, nine, nine lamps each and we sent them to Berlin with a transport company and from that uh, time on we could rent it for events. So the re remaining luminaires on the original 126 are still waiting to be renewed and to be given the opportunity to shine again. So next steps have to be continued. Perhaps somebody wants to join. So, but how is it to build uh, own luminaires part two? I didn't learn our, from the project one, <laughs> I go to project two. So uh, last year I was in charge of the lighting design for the ID exhibition stand at the IFA. It's the International Electronics Fair in Berlin. Um, the task was to build a ring that would set the scene um, for a special mirror ball, as you can see here in the picture. The mirror ball was built by a friend of mine and I had the illumination for this. The ring was to have a diameter of 360 meters and to be controllable in cold and warm white colors. 
the which was extremely slow. So the task was make the impossible possible. Every estimate for this construction was three to five times higher than the budget was. Logistically, the ring had to be transportable in a sprinter, and so we had uh, so it had to be constructed in such a way that it was divided into four parts, which meant the need of being more creatively to the control and uh, of the signal and the electricity. So there are no more uh, more activities I want to show you. Or the ring, okay. So um, how it is to be a technical manager by the light exhibition dark matter. So is it? It is multifaceted, exciting, fascinating, and fulfilling. I have realized my love of light on many levels. I've worked in a permanent employment as a technical director for the audiovisual light art, art exhibition Dark Matter in Berlin since May 2021. I built the technical team from scratch and which, uh, with the touch designer of the company White Void, which is the second company of Christopher Bowder, we form a strong community. So Christopher and I, the, um, we know each other for some years before I started to work with him. And we both understood us on a good design level. And also, perhaps you know, he has uh, also a pandemic way to do things. So on this level, we ensure that the exhibition is kept on being a re really on a high level, technical and visually. Here in the slide, you can see the first room of dark matter. It's uh, called liquid sky. And one of the most um, Recent successes we had um, this year was the Senior System Creation Award. We reached that um, at the Pro Light and Sound Fair in May 2023. The Senior Award is regarded as one of the most respected industry awards in the field of audiovisual installation. It has been an integral part of the Pro Light and Sound Fair in May, since May 2004. My team and I worked with great pride and commitment to keep the exhibition running without notable failures. This picture shows us the installation grid, which is the, also the biggest installation at Dark Matter. Dark Matter has in total seven experiences room. Each room is, has something special. In addition, um, there are extra open air exhibitions twice a year, once in the winter, the winter lights, and once in summer, the summer lights. So my work there covers many areas that go beyond technology. Managing a whole team and make the exhibition more and more professional is very extensive and fulfilling. But beside that, I have some more projects I want to show you. So 2020, um, I founded the Association for Lighting Designers and Lighting and Media Operators uh, in the event industry as one of the 15 founding members, as you can see here in the picture. From 2020 to January 2023, I was a member of the board of association. And the association now has around 180 members and has various working groups in which you can participate and collaborate. So I also wanted to form a network for lighting um, people in, uh, it's almost in Germany, but everybody can join for sure, and to form a network and to have the possibility to, to bring something forward. It was a little bit the idea because also I tried to um, found the study course for lighting design. This was from 2017 to 2020. I worked as a part-time academic assistant, assistant at the Brandenburg University of Technology, Technology to establish the lighting design degree course. This course was planned down to the last detail, but not to be implemented due to an internal political decision despite the availability of financial resources. So I was happy to hear, Isabel, that you did found uh, it uh, in any sense. 
So in Germany, there is no explicit course at, of the study lighting design in Germany. Here you can see the curriculum of the bachelor's degree course we had planned. Later, there was also planning of the master degree, and uh, both study course were planned to be uh, dual studies. Um, yeah, I hope I have given you a good insight from my work so far. I would like to show you some impressions of my work, some pictures. And yeah, I work um, as a freelance lighting designer. I work nationally and internationally. Um, I also love working with uh, permanent partners, such as Lost Village Festival in the UK and the Time of Festival in Germany, or as you can see here in the picture, um, the Decibel Open Air Festival in Italy. This was the main stage, main stage in 2022. And this was this year edition from the Decibel Open Air um, from the main stage also. And compared to the night, this is the main stage by day. So what you can see here, um, we had in the in the hole, the stage was 30 meter long and ran about 10, 12 meters high. And we put a lot of um, LED screens uh, into the stage that you can do lights by, by daylight. This is also a big challenge always on the festivals that there's daylight until late. And then sometimes the festival stop at 12 and then you can do lights two hours in the night. So this helps a lot to have fog machines, haze machines to bring LED screens inside. Yeah, thank you uh, for hearing my presentation. Feel free to contact me if you are interested in my work. If you are in Berlin, join me by Dark Matter. And yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I, I feel like the first question should be, how have you done all that in 20 years and when did you sleep? <laughs> it, uh, that's just incredible. But I, is there any questions from the audience to start off? Or yeah, there's a few. <laughs> Nenea. Oh, it works. Ah, okay. I have a question about the uh, club lighting. Uh, uh, we saw the, the nice uh, uh, back of the DG that says that it was very it's a romance with you. Uh, do you have a uh, um, uh, return back of the users of, do you exchange with the people dancing on the floor? Or, uh, and Yeah, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes they come to me and uh, they, they talk to me about the light. Uh, sometimes I just see that people are really get into one light I do and that it pushes me forward to go more into it. Um, yeah, I have an interaction with them. Sometimes they think that I am a DJ <laughs> 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 because I, I do a lot like basking and working a lot with my hands and faders and going with the, yeah, as I mentioned, like I do it with my impulse of doing lights and uh, I stand always and also I'm, I'm dancing with sometimes. So uh, I have a lot of, um, um, yeah, I did a lot of exchange with the persons around me and um, also, I like to, to be, so, uh, so not every club is the same. Sometimes you have interaction with the DJ, sometimes not. But I also like to go beforehand to the DJ and say, hi, I'm Natalie. I'm doing lights for you, just to give the connection between us. Okay. Mm, good question. Um, it depends a little bit on the venue, I think, and yeah, I think yeah, I think the style of music is the point. But I do almost electro and techno events, and this is like one big crowd, yeah. and the people like you're not feeling nationally in any kind, so you feel you feel the sound in the same direction, and I think this is why it's uh, I could not feel it if it's Italy or Lebanon or something. It's like <laughs> the people love the music and they, they feel it with me. I like the, the way you talk about it as sort of storytelling. Because quite often I think people think of Club Light as it's just there and it's happening. They don't really think of it as an art form, which it's the way you talk about it and the way you describe it. It clearly is an art form. And you talk about it, you say you're the designer, 
But to me, from what you said, you're you're performing with light. Do you yeah. feel like a performer rather than a? Yeah, I feel also like a performer. Be yeah, because I really go into it. And if I don't have my hands on the faders and on the buttons, there is uh, almost not coming the light out. So yeah. there is light out, but I, I put the, the output more and more with pushing the music the way I feel. That's, and is that similar how to you? Like, you must be like a member of the band, really, rather than just the lighting designer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I feel like uh, this is because I talk to of my band because I yeah. feel like a member of the band, and I feel the, I feel really close to to the person th for, to which I perform. Yeah. Nice. So we've got some more questions on the front there, Linnea. I think. Oh, and a microphone from the other side. Cool. Hello. Um, hey. I was just wondering. You sort of touched about it earlier, but. I just wanted to see how it differs in the process of like from venue to venue, how much you busk and how much you prepare and how much you go into it having like sort of preloaded stacks and having preloaded things versus actually just feeling it in the moment, closing your eyes and just sort of seeing what's around you. So I always prepare everything, uh, the technical details and beforehand for sure. Um, but then um, I have some... Mostly, I do it really what I so what you see is what you get. So I, I, I do basking. Um, I have some prepared cues. Uh, I have some looks prepared, but if it's getting really close and really to the performing, um, I do it by scratch and by by myself. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Um, so you were saying like sometimes you get projects where you're kind of given free reign over the lights. So where is it in particular that you start with that? And then how do you manage your workflow afterwards? Because obviously you've got quite tight turnarounds and quite quick deadlines. So how is it that you, you're sort of the most efficient when it comes to planning lights and where do you start and go on? Um, it depends on the project. If there's a framework for the project, if there's a budget or if not, if I have to um, make suggestions because um, yeah, because the time is n the time slot is short, so it's depending on on many different um, points how how the frame is is for that. And uh, if you if I have the frame with the with the customer, uh, I can go on. And if I have a lot of time beforehand and the budget is more and bigger, I also uh, work with other partners and I say, come on, let's try to. Um, find uh, like cooperation with the visual designer and make a cooperation with the design light this with lighting designer who do the design with me so it, it's really depending on how much time i have there's a question at the back there Linnea. hi um, what struck me as, as really exciting about your whole presentation is all the different types of lighting that you've been doing and how you've sort of been reinventing yourself and trying all these different things. And I was wondering, is there something that you haven't tried yet that you're secretly desperate to try or something yeah, new yeah. that you want to push <laughs> into? Question. Yeah, that's the, I have. So uh, I really want to go to architectural lighting. Uh, I'm super interested in that one. Um, I, I also wanted to do like um, orchestra and opera lighting just to give myself another view how it is because there is not a basking fast techno show <laughs> so you <laughs> really have to think in another direction but um, yeah architectural lighting and uh, this concert opera lighting is the, the next uh, what I want to explore. <laughs> 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 In a nightclub. A project, <laughs> and you're there on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Your microphone's okay. not working now. Um, so, any, any, yep, oh, look, there's loads more questions in the audience there. So, if I ask you what is your power song or power <laughs> music title, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Um, I love hearing 80s, so <laughs> 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 I think it's uh, <laughs> it's all the 80s stuff. <laughs> Do you get much of that in the clubs you work in? No, <laughs> <laughs> but this is, this is really good because uh, I love techno for sure, but yeah. I, I, I don't hear it at home. Yeah. 
so I, I need something else to hear. I cannot hear the same, like uh, coming yeah. from a rave and then going home and hearing like electronic music. Yeah. Have you ever done an 80s show? Or? Yeah. <laughs> you have. <laughs> okay. I think there's yeah. an. an yeah, yeah, I yep. have a technical question actually. Uh, what software are you using? And do you look, do a lot of previs or do you only improvise? Um, I use uh, GrandMA, so there's also a GrandMA on PC software for that, for preparation. Um, uh, for video stuff, it's Resolume. And uh, yeah, for the visual parts, um, I'm working in cooperation with uh, Depends. But not by myself, uh, but this is why I also have partners to realize bigger projects. Okay. I, I was sort of really curious is how do you get the jobs in the clubs? For example, like you've done print works and you've done Lebanon and you've done the, the Berlin clubs. Is it, do the DJs invite you? Do the clubs invite you? Where, where does it come yeah, from? Yeah, some, some. So sometimes uh, a DJ knows me and then um, he or she said, uh, do you want to join my event there? Um, sometimes it's like people talk to me um, and want to invite me in their club yeah. because they, they are on an event and they see my lights and they want to have something testing how could that look into in, in my venue. So and then they just uh, invite me on that way. So I'm not on social media, which is perhaps a little, little bit bad, <laughs> um, but um, I do not, uh, yeah. It seems to be working. It it's seems it. to be working <laughs> in that way. Yeah. So it's just like people talk about it and then they ask me. What's your favorite club? Inside the Burkhain, because Burkhain is a really, you can be free there. Um, there is no uh, videos allowed, there is no mobile phone allow allowed. I like it a lot. So you can dance and feel what you feel by hearing the music. Um, and beside that, it's really the print works. I love the venue. I had a, a great first party there when the balconies, and it was a printing plant beforehand yeah. and the balconies were open and all the machines standing there and you can go through this huge I love industrial buildings it's a stunning this space is, this yeah. is the point also I love like the old huge industrial designs buildings and this is why I like print works a lot yeah okay we got any more questions from online Lene or anything I was curious, actually, um, do you have a dream venue or a dream club that you would like to work in that you haven't been in? Hmm. Um, yeah, there's drum sheet uh, parties in the uh, UK now. I want to work there because uh, Printworks is closed. We're too old. Printworks <laughs> is closed. Which one? <laughs> uh, it's called uh, the drum sheet uh, parties. Okay. And Young people from the UK might be. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody recognize that? Yeah, I, I also want to um, explore like more fest new festivals I've never been before. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, just to to make up also bigger stages. I wanted to see the Tomorrowland, for example, just because it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever Not thought about yet. Burning Man? And Burning <laughs> Man this is the second one, but I was a little bit shy to say it because it was in the rain <laughs> this year. No, but Burning Man is also a festival never been. I want to work there. Yeah, I want to be amazing. there. Excellent. Yeah, so um, for those interested, we'll be organizing a visit at some point next week to Berlin to see some of the, uh, to see Natalie's work and hang out in Berlin. So looking forward to that. <laughs> Stay tuned. Definitely go to We, Dorf, we were so lucky enough to go in June and we can totally recommend it. It's a really good light experience if you it love is. light. Dorf, yeah. Is Summer lights still on, or have you transitioned um, to winter lights? Now we transition it to winter lights. Winter lights is uh, open from the 16th November on, and then to the rest of the year, and almost to the rest of the year. And then we are working for the new summer light edition. Um, so it, June, June, July should be safe. Excellent. But you can just ask me beforehand when is the opening date for the summer lights. I don't have it yet. Thank you, Nate. Thank you Thank very you. much. That Thank was you. amazing. Fascinating. So it's time for a lunch break. We'll be back at 13.20. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much, Nate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the questions.